Hi, my name's Esteban Azevedo, and I'm a physical therapist, and I teach for the International Academy of Orthopedic Medicine and own a physical therapy practice called Modern Physical Therapy. Earlier, I recorded a lecture on epidural steroid injections, because that's a very common procedure that pain management physicians perform. A procedure that's less commonly known about, but really effective, is called epidural lysis of adhesions. And I wanted to share that with you today. So what is epidural lysis of adhesions? The short answer is it's an injection with a catheter into the epidural space to help decrease pain and inflammation of dural and nerve root pain and to soften up and break up scar tissue. It's indicated when there's too much scar tissue, usually after a surgery, that's built up into the epidural space and scars down your nerve roots. It can sometimes help with some low back or neck pain, but it's really indicated for when nerve roots are causing arm pain from the neck or leg pain from the back due to scar tissue after a surgery. The long answer? Well, keep watching. Disclaimer, I'm not a physician. I'm a physical therapist, and I work side by side with pain physicians for the last 20 years, so I'm explaining their pain procedures all day long. So uh, this little OEA logo in the corner, that's uh, a company my wife and I created to create brochures for pain doctors. Because we're so familiar with these procedures and we're educating patients about them, we write brochures to help pain physicians educate their patients. Now I thought it would be good to have a little format to educate you uh, with this voiceover PowerPoint as well. So what is epidural fibrosis? So just like any part of our body, when we get injured, our body often heals itself, and it does so with creating new collagen or even scar tissue. And some people scar more than others. You see people, you see people with... Uh, after surgery, some people have a tiny little line you can barely see, and some people get a big keloid scar that's raised up over the skin and puffy, and it's just because we all scar differently. And sometimes you get a back surgery, like a discectomy, where the surgeon takes out part of the disc that's been pushing on the nerve root and does a wonderful job, but then the body scars over the nerve root, and that's called epidural fibrosis. And I'm not really sure what it looks like. When I went to my artist, I said, hey, can you draw me a picture of epidural fibrosis? He said, what does it look like? I said, I've, I've not seen any picture in a textbook or on the internet. So we just kind of created this spider web type looking scar tissue. And some people call it failed back surgery syndrome. And I don't like to call it that. That's not fair to the surgeons. They did a good job, but sometimes the back just didn't heal well. And so this lumbar epidural fibrosis, it's usually if they've had a previous lumbar surgery, and they usually have more leg pain than back pain. And it's rare that the person has no time without pain. It's pretty, pretty severe, the pain. And it's a different type of pain. It's called neurogenic pain. It's usually not inflammatory pain but it's pain from the nerves because that nerve is constantly scarred down. So often an anti-inflammatory medication doesn't work for this type of patient. And if they try to stretch their hamstrings or it's really a nerve stretch, th this picture, that it often makes them much worse. And so if, if you've had back surgery in the past and you uh, think you need a new MRI or a doctor thinks you need an MRI, I recommend that you consider an MRI with contrast so they can see if there's scar tissue. You usually don't need the MRI with contrast before surgery, but if you need a new MRI afterwards, that's when it's indicated. And so this is a really cool picture. If you do a regular epidural and someone with epidural fibrosis, the medication goes in and the fluid will always flow to the path of least resistance. So it starts flowing to the left. It it gets blocked and the medication goes all to the right. So often regular epidurals may not work for these patients. Not never, just, just sometimes. And so when a regular epidural doesn't work with epidural fibrosis, they could do this epidural lysis of adhesions. And that's where they'll run up the catheter, steer it to that side, 
and inject a cocktail of medications, and then they'll even poke in the needle a bit to break up that scar tissue, and they're injecting some dye in there, so when they inject dye, you'll finally see it start flowing through to the nerve root, and then that's how they know they broke up the scar tissue and that it's going to work. So here's some indications from some pain journals. So this study calls it percutaneous adhesiolysis as another name for it. It's also called the RACC catheter, R-A-C-Z, and also epidural lysis adhesions. So the indications are that you have chronic low back and leg pain, that you failed uh, back surgery beforehand, you might uh, have spinal stenosis is another indication, or a chronic disc herniation with radiculitis of at least six months. Usually the pain's intermittent or constant of at least six out of 10 or greater. And you should have failed conservative care, such as physical therapy, uh, some medication, and regular epidurals. And you shouldn't have facet joint pain or cigarillac joint pain. So once you get the procedure, they put in a mixture of medications and they'll do some local anesthetic to numb it. They'll do some uh, hyaluronic acid and uh, some hypertonic saline and those break up that scar tissue and help it kind of uh, come apart when the needle jams its way in there. And then afterwards, you want to do some neural flossing. Usually what we did in the clinic is we do it uh, right after because I work side by side with the pain physician. So we'd move up their, their hip joint and their leg and their foot and we'd start gliding that nerve called neural flossing right after the procedure. But if you uh, can't get to the pain, the physical, physical therapist right afterwards, then you could start doing these uh, neural flossing. So I like to do that for several minutes at a, at a time especially that first day of the procedure. So maybe for a minute, five, five different times. Sometimes this procedure is done in one day, and sometimes they'll leave the catheter in and they'll do it three days in a row. So this is a super cool procedure. Not many pain physicians perform it. So don't expect every pain physician out there to perform this procedure. But if you've had back surgery and it's been after six months, because they won't do any procedures right after back surgery, even if you have pain, then look for an interventional pain physician that does this procedure. But just keep in mind that all interventional pain management is a part of a more comprehensive treatment plan. So I recommend also doing some physical therapy, but probably don't do any stretching until after the nerve root has better mobility and is less painful. Thank you for listening and hope to have you join us for another presentation.